how to set the settings of a sublevel with C++ in Unreal. And since there are a few of them, I decided to group them all in one video for you. So today we're going to take a look at the most important settings that you can set for the sublevels. And in those settings, you have the lighting scenario. So to decide if the level is a lighting scenario or not, the location and rotation of the level, the color of the level, locking or unlocking the level, setting the level's visibility, or deciding if the level is blueprint loaded or always loaded, and a few other ones. So let's get to it. But before we start, this video is going to re some code we wrote in the video 16 of the series so I recommend to go see that one but if you don't want to here is the code and here we are in the header file and today we're just going to do one function and here it is you can see that it is pretty big because I decided that I'm just going to apply all the setting into only one little function that way we don't waste too much time creating a bunch of different functions but you can obviously create all the different functions yourself if you want to separate all those settings so first the first parameter is going to be the level name so which level you want to change the settings of so that's super obvious and then you're going to have a boolean to decide if you want your level to be a lighting scenario or not so b is lighting scenario then you have a vector for the location of your level so you can move your level around you have a float for the rotation of your level so a little float right here then you have a color which is a linear color obviously then you have a boolean to decide if the level should be locked or not another boolean to decide if the level should be visible or not a boolean to decide if the level should be always loaded another one to decide if the level should be loaded at the beginning of the game and finally a last one to decide if the level should be visible at the beginning of the game and as usual you can ignore those two last parameters if you don't need them and for the name of the function i just named it the set sub level settings because we're going to set all the different settings all at once and actually since i'm setting a bunch of different settings at the same time the order in which i'm going to set the settings are pretty important in that case because some settings are actually going to break the other settings if you're not applying them in the right order so since i'm doing everything in the same function i have to apply those settings in that specific order otherwise some of them won't work but if you're applying them in different function it should not be a problem as long as you're not calling them all on the same frame in the same function call you should not have any problem but if you're changing multiple settings on the same frame you should pretty much follow that order if you don't want to have any issues so anyway that's it for the header file now it's time to jump in the cpp and here as usual we're going to start with the includes and today we're going to have a few of them because we have a few settings to apply so first include is going to be the code of the video 16 to be able to retrieve the level that we want to modify the settings of the, and then we have all those includes right here so first the level that age because we want to apply some settings directly to the level so we need a reference to that level then we need the editor level utils because some settings are going to be applied using the helper functions that are already inside that class and same thing for the level utils some settings are going to be applied using those functions because we already have a few different functions that we can use to apply a few different settings so why not using them and the last two includes that we have right here is simply to decide if we want to have the level be a blueprint loaded level or an always loaded level so to do that since it works with classes we have to include those two classes to be able to apply them to the level so here it's going to be the include to set the level as an always loaded level and finally the include to be able to set the level as a blueprint loaded level so that's actually it for our includes and since we have an include inside the unreal ed module we have to make sure that this module is already in the build.cs file so i'm just gonna go get a quick look right here and here it is i have my unreal ed module so everything should work as expected perfect now we can jump back in the cpp and focus on the function and actually the beginning of the function is going to be pretty similar to something that we did before we have to first find the level and the world that we want to modify so first for the world i'm going to use the world that is currently open in the editor just because oh, it's going to be a little bit simpler so here i'm going to ask my editor which level it's open currently and it is my world so inside that world we have a bunch of different levels and i'm going to reuse some code that we wrote in the video 16 to find inside that world the level that we want to modify so using the sub level name that we receive as input we're going to find that level and that's going to give us the sub level we want to modify and actually for this video we need to go a little bit deeper actually we also need the level streaming because here we have a level we also need the level streaming that is inside that level so here i'm just going to get it by doing a fine streaming level uh, that's super simple i have my sub level and it's going to return me the level streaming that is inside that level right here so i have my world i have my sub level and i have my level streaming and before starting to apply some settings to them i'm just going to make sure that they are valid so here my sub level if it's equal to null or if my sub level streaming is equal to null i'm just going to return right away because those variables are not valid and we cannot apply any settings to them perfect so now we have the sub level and the level streaming that are valid and it's time to apply settings to them i'm just going to scroll down because we have a lot of them to apply but we're going to start with a simple one the lighting scenario so in the sub level we can change the lighting scenario to decide if the level should be a lighting scenario or not and that's super simple we just have to do a set lighting scenario using the boolean that we receive as input okay that was simple perfect 
perfect. The, the next one is going to be the transform of the level. That one we have to go through the level utils to be able to apply the transform properly to the level. So F level utils set editor transform of the level streaming that we just found. So that level streaming, we're going to apply it this transform right here. So for the rotation, we're going to use the RIA that we receive as input. And then we have the location that we receive as input also. So that's going to apply the transform properly to the level. So we have the lighting scenario, the transform. The next one is going to be the color. That one's super simple. In the level setting, we can simply set the level color and that's super easy. Set the level color, that's done. Then we have the lock state of the level. So do we want the level to be locked or not in the editor? And that one's a little bit annoying because there's no set lock state for the level. We can only toggle the level lock state and that's a little bit annoying. So here in the level utils, we can toggle the level lock and we just have to feed the sub level that we want to lock or unlock. But in our case, we want to force a specific lock state. We don't just want to toggle it. So here I'm just going to check if the lock state of the level, the current lock state, so is the level locked, is equal to if I want my level to be locked or not. So if they are not the same, if the level is locked and I want it to be unlocked, I'm going to toggle the lock state and vice versa. So I'm just going to call the toggle level lock if the lock state of my level is not currently the right one. Perfect. So Okay, lock is done. And the next one is going to be the visibility. That one is pretty straightforward. In the editor level util, it's another class, but we still have a nice little helper function that lets us set the level's visibility. So you can just feed the sub level you want to change the visibility, the visibility that you want to have. And finally, I'm setting true at the end. That one is for the layers. And it's just to tell the function if we want the layers to follow the same visibility as the level. In my case, I want it to be the case. So I want my layers to always follow the same visibility as my level. So I'm just going to feed true right here. Okay, visibility is done. The next one's going to be the level streaming method. And that one is a little bit annoying. Actually, it's really annoying. It's mainly the reason why we have to follow that specific order when we apply the settings, because when we change the streaming method of the actor, it's actually going to destroy the level streaming. So the level streaming right here, it's going to destroy it and replace it by a new level streaming that's going to have a different class. Because that's how you decide if the level should be always loaded or blueprint loaded, it's by using a class. So here we have the always loaded class and the blueprint loaded class right here. Here I'm going to start by setting my desired class and I'm just going to apply it in the case that it's not already the right one because I don't want to do extra work. So here to set my desired class, I'm going to check if I want my level to be always loaded. If the level should be always loaded, I'm going to use the class always loaded. Obviously, that just makes sense. And otherwise, I'm going to use the U level streaming dynamic class, which is the blueprint loaded class. That's going to give me the class I want to apply to my level streaming and I can apply it right here. So here, if the level streaming class is not the same as my desired class, I'm just going to set streaming class for level using you editor level utils and that's super simple we just have to feed the level streaming that we want to modify and the new class we want to apply to that level streaming as output that function is going to give you the new level streaming that was created because it's going to replace it by a new one so we have to update the variable and the reason why i'm modifying my variable is because i want to apply the two last settings that we receive at the beginning of the function and that's going to be on that variable so we have to make sure that it is up to date so we have the level streaming on which we want to apply those two last settings but actually those settings are only specific to the dynamic level streaming. We cannot apply them to the always loaded level streaming. It's only for the dynamic level streaming. So here I'm just going to check to see if my level streaming is a dynamic level streaming. And if it is the case, then I can apply those two last settings. So if my level streaming is not equal to null, it means that it is dynamic. And if it is dynamic, I can simply apply the initially loaded variable and also the initially visible variable using the inputs that we receive at the beginning of the function. And that's about it. Actually, we've set every variable that we wanted to to set to the level streamings. Now I can simply return that it was a success. I was able to apply all the different settings I wanted to apply. And now it's time to jump in Unreal to test if it works. And here we are in Unreal. And today I have a new world and a new sub level that we're going to use for our tests in my new world. Well, that's a world I'm in right now. And my sub level is the level that I have right here. So it has a few objects in there and we can use that level for all of our tests. And we're going to change all the different settings. So the lighting scenario, the locked, if the level is blueprint loaded and always loaded, the position, rotation, initially loaded, visible, the color, etc. So we're going to change all those variables today. And we're going to do that using a user interface as usual, because especially today, we have a lot of variables. So that's going to make our life way easier. So first we have the level name. So the level we want to modify, yeah, super straightforward. Then we have the location. So X, Y, and Z. We have the rotation Z, which is the yaw of my level. So I have my rotation right here. The color I want to apply to the level. So R, G, and B. And finally, a bunch of other checkboxes that help us apply all the different booleans that are going to be fed to the function. When I click 
click on apply setting, it should call the function we created today. So the function that we have right here, set sublevel settings and feeding it all the different settings that I have in my user interface. And there's a lot of them, but you can see that here they are and we are feeding them all to the function. So now if I go in my level and I try my editor utility widget right here, I'm going to scroll and then we have my sublevel. If I apply setting, it should not do anything because the level already has all those default settings. So it doesn't change anything, but then we're going to try with the location. So I'm just going to try to move my level around. Oh, you can see that the level move and you can see that the number in the UI right here change also. So I can move my level in the Y axis now. I can make it up a little bit, a little bit higher, a little bit lower, maybe through the ground, just like that, or maybe back up. So the position of the level works. And now for the rotation, if I apply a different rotation, we can see that it also works. Like I can rotate my level around a little bit. Do, 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 do. Level is rotating, level is rotating. So it seems to work. Then for the color, we have the color that we have right here and right there. So we're going to try to change that color using those little spin boxes. So if I change the color, yeah, here we go. Now I'm red. If I change the color, now I should be around a darker red. I can put it back to a green or maybe something like more blue. So you can see that the color also works properly. Now we can decide if we want the level to be a lighting scenario or not. You can check that using the little light bulb icon right here. If it's on, it means that the level is a lighting scenario. If it's not, well, it's not. So I'm just going to uncheck the checkbox. We can see that now the level is not a lighting scenario. And if I toggle it on, and the level is now a lighting scenario again. So on, off, on, off, on, off. So it seemed to work. Then we can decide if we want to lock the level or not. So I'm just going to lock the level. We can see that the little lock icon is now locked because the level is locked and I cannot move any of the actors that are inside the level. I cannot change the position of my level because it's now locked. I can unlock it, obviously. So lock, unlock, lock, unlock. It seems to work. Then I can decide if I want my level to be visible or not. It was visible by default. So I can hide it and show it. Here we go. And then I can decide if the level is going to be always loaded or simply blueprint loaded. You can see that right here. It seems to work because it changes something in the user interface, but you can also see it right here in the left of the level. You can see a little blue dot if the level is a blueprint loaded level. So if I uncheck the always loaded and I apply it, we can see that the blue dot appeared right here on the left of the level. I don't know if you see it, but it's pretty small anyway. So you can see that, but it also updates the user interface right here because those two variables, as I said before, they are only available for blueprint loaded level, the initially loaded and initially visible variable the two variables that we have right here, they are only available if the level is not an always loaded level. So that's why when I'm setting my level to always loaded, Unreal removes them because they are not going to do anything. So here we go. Now it seems to work. I can make the level blueprint loaded because I also want to try my two last variable right here. If I apply my setting, we can see those two variables right here on my level. So I can make it always loaded, initially loaded or whatever you want. You can set all the different settings that you want on your level. Perfect. So everything seems to work. So I guess that's going to conclude today's video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.